Hey guys, so today I'm going to be going over the carbon fiber rod end attachments I designed for the SCAR robot in my last video. And I'm also going to be doing some pull out tests with this weight scale that has a max hold feature. And so what I'm going to do is test the pull out strength of a rod end attachment without glue, one with epoxy, and then one with super glue just so we can see the differences between the three pull out strengths. Okay, so the rod and detachments I designed can easily be laser cut, 3D printed, or just made out of wood. So I'm going to post a link to a GitHub that where you can find the 3D model files and the DXF files for the rod ends for the 8mm outer diameter, 6mm inner diameter. You need to make sure that you use 8th inch material for this exact design, if you took my exact design and 3D printed it, then it wouldn't be a problem. But if you were to laser cut it on your own, this is assuming that you're using eighth inch material because otherwise if you use thinner or thicker material, it's not gonna work. So you would have to adjust the uh, dimensions if you're using a different thickness material. For the servo motors from the SCAR robot, I needed the spacer plate because the carbon fiber I wanted to be able to make full revolutions, and in order to do that, I needed to put a spacer there. So I have the spacer plate there, the regular rod end attachment, and then the crossbar. And so that gives you the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight points of contact with the tube. So I'm, let's just do the pullout test now. I'm going to use, like I said, the scale here, and then I'll go into how I made the actual swivel joint. So let's just go ahead and do the non-glued first. So these two have been glued, neither one of these have, and I'm just gonna pull. Okay, so that was 15.8 pounds. Okay, and uh, let's clear it. Let's just do one more without glue. So that was 21. Oh yeah, I didn't hold that time, but. Okay, so let's do super glue first and then epoxy. So this is the super glued version. Let's try to tighten this up. Uh, I don't even really have a good way to grip this to pull it out. It's gonna probably crack the carbon fiber before I get a good grip on it, yeah. Okay, so I um, can't really pull any more than that, so that's super glue. Uh, let's switch it here. Um, if this, if I can't get this side to pull out, I can actually, I'm gonna grab onto something uh, from both sides and just see which one gives first. So let's, uh, let's reset that. So this is the epoxy side. Yeah, so I'm I'm sliding down the tube here. So let's let's add a hook to this side, and let's just see which side gives out first. Okay. Okay, so looks like we're at 60 pounds and that is the epoxy side actually. So the epoxy seemed to give out before the super glue did, which is a little surprising. What's cool about these is if you weren't as, um, if you weren't trying to reduce the weight as much as possible, you could just extend this out. You could make it, you know, much longer insert 
Okay, so I didn't really want to leave the super glue variant without an actual pullout number. So let's try to see if we can actually get a pullout on it. Okay, so since that just bent this hook here, let's try it again. Um, that was 134 pounds and it still didn't pull out. I got a big rod to pull now. Okay, well, um, I think I need some better hooks, but uh, I think we can't say for certain that 184 pounds is pretty impressive for super glue. I, I'm pretty surprised that the epoxy wasn't stronger for the carbon fiber because I, you know, I think a lot of the um, carbon fiber is actually made with epoxy in the fiber. But I guess the super glue is just better for this particular type of carbon fiber. I mean, I really need to get a, a different setup to test this kind of stuff. Maybe I'll get some better hooks, but 184 pounds uh, almost knocked my whole bench over here. And uh, it didn't even look like it, it really budged at all. I mean, it bent the actual aluminum a bit, but the... Uh, Otherwise, it's it's pretty strong. So, okay. So, I also wanted to show a few off-the-shelf parts that you could buy. They do have carbon fiber ends like this. These are for quadcopters, so you know you have limited applications. I mean, you could use them for you know right angles or you know structural components, but they're kind of expensive and if you have access to a 3d printer or a laser cutter Then this is going to be a lot cheaper for you. There's also these well nuts and the way they work is There is a brass insert inside so It actually perfectly fits into this 10, uh, 10 millimeter inner diameter carbon fiber tube and so when you tighten down the brass pulls through the rubber and the well nut expands so it makes pretty good end detachments for this specific style and you can use these well nuts in other things as well and you can glue them in so this one I glued in, this one I didn't. Yeah, so you could use these well nuts for all different kinds of applications and different size tubes. They make several different sizes of these well nuts. And it doesn't have to be perfect fit because as long as it fits in the tube, it'll expand enough to hold uh, the position you need. If you need extra strength, you could drill a hole in the side. Uh, that way, when the rubber starts expanding, it kind of has some uh, somewhere to to grip. So this one hasn't been glued, and I can pull that one out. But this one I can't get to pull out. Okay, so let's see if I can get the pull out strength on the glued in rubber well nut. see the brass insert just pulled out after a certain point but that's plenty strong for a lot of applications so these cheap little well nuts might help you out okay so to build these little swivel joints I used in the scar robot all you're gonna need is a 
screw and a nut. And in this case, I'm using sheet metal hardware just because that's what I have access to and I think it looks a little cleaner. And this is a PEM nut, so that gets pressed into sheet metal. And again, you could just use a screw and a nut as long as it doesn't interfere with the bearing. And for you just take two of these and press in these bearings and you can do that with an arbor press if you have parallel jaws on your pliers you can do that or you can use even just like a little bench vise you know you can press them in and uh, so I have a bearing in the top and the bottom and in between I have these little thrust bearings they're the little ball bearings in a cage and two little washers that have grooves in them. So when they stack like that in a little sandwich, they, uh, they provide a lot of support for the other bearings. So you just end up with a nice gliding action. So I also made these attachment, you know, this little rod in here for a NEMA 17 stepper motor and so you know I, I could see this being used for you know structures as well as linkages for robots so you know you guys could design a you know all out of one piece you could design it in a you know three-way two-way four-way junction that's just one part that you could easily make now if you were 3d printing you could just technically 3d print the whole part and not in two pieces you could print it in one part but i still think it would be stronger to print it in two pieces and then press it together just because the when you're doing the layers on the 3d printer you know you're going to basically get the best strength in both directions so i mean it's worth the uh, testing if you guys have any other carbon fiber attachments that uh, you know about or you've designed or you've seen elsewhere, leave a comment below and I'll check them out. So I've just really started playing with the carbon fiber. So I noticed there wasn't a lot of off the shelf attachments other than quadcopter parts and pretty expensive um, parts for you know exhibits and structures. And stuff like that but you know the carbon fibers are the tubing is getting a lot cheaper now so all right guys well that was that was it i mean not a whole lot to it anyway hope you guys like that video if you have any questions suggestions leave a comment below and i'll see you next time bye